I'm David Briggs, a musician, few little production, lots of publishing, lots of arranging, session player, basically for 50 years. Well, as far as uh, the Muscle Shoals sound evolving, uh, everybody always laughs when I say it, but I think it was a matter of we had nothing else to do, you know? And it's just a whole lot of talent there, and they were all bored, I think. So we all kind of played in bands, if you were musicians, and got into recording accidentally. But James Joyner was the guy who got everything going. My biggest influences were uh, WLAC, John R., Hoss Allen, all those people. And that's why we evolved into an R&B type uh, music center first. The thing that helped us more than anything was when Bill Lowry liked what was happening down there, and he came down and he brought Tommy Rowe, of course, so I'd already mentioned that, then he brought uh, the Tams. But I mean, I was influenced, of course, by the R&B records I was hearing, but I was also influenced by Elvis and Jerry Lee. There was never a transition from being a musician, producer, uh, arranger, I did a lot of arranging. I arranged thousands of sides, but nobody ever thought of me as an arranger here. I did some here for Owen Bradley, Chet Atkins, and some people, but I did, in, a, in L.A., I was known more as an arranger. In London, in Paris, I was known more as an arranger. Well, Paris, more of a piano player and arranger. But I always liked the writing and the publishing, and I liked the publishing more. I liked to work with writers, because without the writers, they wouldn't be... The musicians wouldn't have a job, studios, there wouldn't be a studio, there's no reason for it. When I left Muscle Shows, my transition from Muscle Shows to here took me to other places, some of them influenced by Muscle Shows, mainly Europe. They, they still, they think the Muscle Shows thing is the greatest thing in the world, and, and that's nice. So that, that probably helped me some, because I worked a lot in Paris and London. Just before I moved, Kelso Hurston signed me as a singer. And I did a record for him. It never got placed, I don't think, and I was fooling around. Then I was pitching songs for myself and Dan, and I wrote a song with Dan called My Dreams that Brenda Lee cut with Owen Bradley. Owen Bradley was the biggest producer in the world at the time. And I was playing him a song. I had a song called Imagine years before John Lennon wrote one. And I pitched it to him for Brenda Lee, and he says, I don't like the song but I like the singer. He said, who's that boy? I said, what boy? He said, that boy. I said, that's me. He said, you sing? I said, well, not really. I just couldn't get the girl who demoed the My Dreams that Brenda Lee and I wrote, I mean, that Dan Penn and I wrote that Brenda Lee recorded, and I couldn't get her. She was working, so I sang the song. He said, well, you got any more tapes? I said, no, but I'll play you. He said, you play? He didn't know, I play. He didn't know anything about me except I was a songwriter, he thought, just... So I said, yeah. He said, what do you play? I said, I play piano. Well, he's a piano player. So I didn't realize how good he was. Or I wouldn't have the courage to sit down and play. So I got on his piano and started playing. He said, I'm not going to tell you I'll sign you, but I got an opening for an artist. He said, I'm going to audition next Friday. You'll be here. And Owen Bradley auditioned about 50 people, and he left Wayne Carson and I to last. And he said, come on up here, both of you together. So he said, to make it short, I can't make up my mind. I'm signing both of you. Neither one of us ever had a hit with him. He's the greatest producer there ever was. <laughs>